Gauteng hospitals became the center of the anti-immigrant protest section this week. Members of Operation Dudula alleged to have uh, demanded identification from patients and even staff members. Actions of the movement follows last week's emergence of a viral video showing Limpopo Health MEC Dr. Popi Ramatuba berating an undocumented Zimbabwean patient at a Bilabela Bila hospital. Joining us now to share his perspective on what some have called the politicization of the country's health service uh, is uh, human rights activist Mark Haywood. Mark, good to have you on tonight here on In Focus. So it's the MEC, it's uh, Operation to do it's the EFF coming into the fray. Looks like a very important commodity. In fact, Duma Kubule says uh, it's, it's, it's not just a, a, a social thing, uh, but it is actually an economic uh, thing that the country needs a health system that works to have healthy people for the economy to grow has become a political football. Are you surprised at all? And does this raise a concern for you? Good evening, <coughs> Tabo. Um, I think it is very unfortunate, and I think you're absolutely right that health and the health system is becoming a political football, and it is being kicked around opportunistically by various organizations and political parties for short-term political gain that is at the expense, <clears throat> pardon me, of all the users of the public health care system. You know, as you, as, as you quoted Duma Klobule as, as saying, really health is vital to economy. Health touches upon the life of every one of 60 million people in our country. And when a health system starts to fail or fails very seriously in parts of the health system, then it does become a crisis and it does become vulnerable. And that is what we are, are seeing at the moment. You know, Tabo, I would, a lot of the focus over the last few days has been on the xenophobia and the people who want to reintroduce medical apartheid blaming migrants for the crisis in the health system. But that's just not true at all. And, and I would say that there are four distinct factors that are causing the collapse of our health system. And if you'll allow me, number one is very large scale corruption that probably takes about uh, 60 or 70 billion rand a year out of the healthcare system that should be going into clinics, hospitals, doctors, nurses. The second is underfunding of the healthcare system. So people are stealing, even whilst the government is drastically cutting the amount that it budgets for, for health. The third is maladministration, people running hospitals and prov provinces who are not capable to run those hospitals and provinces, quite often because they're deployed in order to be close to tenders and the opportunity to, to, to make money. And the fourth is that after COVID-19, there is a growing burden of disease and there's growing demand for healthcare services because non-communicable diseases have been neglected, mental illnesses on the rise, and so at the same time as more people are needing health care, the health care system is having the, the, the foundations taken away from underneath it. And the fact of the matter is that in that equation, uh, migrants, legal, illegal migrants are just a small factor and are not the cause. And it really is it's just, it's unlawful, immoral and unethical to block anybody from access to a health care service. Yeah. From from the looks of it, I mean, it, it, it looks like, for example, the statements of the MEC are going to receive political support. I don't know if I heard the president directly condemn uh, what the, the, the MEC says, except for the president to say uh, she's raising a very important debate. Uh, is there any reason why you think such actions would enjoy political support, especially from the ANC? Well, I think it's very sad. I think there's a simple reason, which is that once again, the ANC and the president protects its own uh, and protects its people and is unable to speak out and distinguish 
on questions of unlawful and immoral conduct. And, and I think it's very sad. I was at a national congress of the Treatment Action Campaign two days ago, uh, where Minister Patla said, no, I'm not prepared to comment on it, you know, in front of a room of 200 health activists. And yet it's, it's at the forefront of everybody's minds. You know, the president could condemn it, but could at the same time say that uh, the MEC uh, has t touched on an important issue, but done so in completely the wrong way. And let's discuss the issue, because, Tabo, there is a very real issue about migration and health. Uh, there's no agreement within the Southern African development community uh, about how we share the burden of health, about how, for example, uh, Zimbabwe would cover costs of people from Zimbabwe or Namibia would cover costs. You know, such an agreement is possible and reasonable and legitimate. But once again, our politicians have not even tried, have not even put the issue on the table. So to blame it on migrants when it has more to do with their omission and their failure to manage the healthcare system in a responsible way is just scapegoating, to be quite honest with you. And as I said, it's about party loyalty rather than constitutional loyalty. When a politician says if an illegal migrant is on life support and a South African needs that oxygen, I'll pull the mask off the illegal migrant and put it on the face of the South African. If you die, you die. What does that say about our humanity? Is that the measure of our humanity? Is that where we are now? Well, it's, it's inhuman to pull the, the, the plug on anybody's life or deny anybody access to life-saving medical treatment, whether they are South African or whether they are foreign. You know, the simple answer to that, Tabo, is that why is there such a shortage of medical equipment? The, the answer to that is to ensure that we have more, uh, res you know, more ventilators, more MRI machines, more nurses, more doctors. Why don't we have more doctors, more nurses? Because Corruption, as I said, is stealing billions of rand out of the healthcare system because, because the people who are managing hospitals don't know what's going on in their hospitals. They don't listen to when a doctor or a specialist says a machine is broken down. They don't replace the, the machine. And so it's not only a question of a, an immigrant versus a South African. For the most part, it is a South African versus a South African. Who gets this machine? Whose life gets saved? Which which baby do we choose not to save and which baby do we choose? So, so there, there's a much deeper issue that is, is going on here. And, it's, and, and, it's, and it really is tragic because people are losing their lives unnecessarily every day in our health system. Let me give you one fact in relation to COVID-19. The death rate, the case fatality rate for COVID-19 in the Eastern Cape is twice the case fatality rate of the, of, in, in Gauteng. It's something like 855 people per 100,000 versus 415 per 100,000. Can you imagine that? You know, that's the borders within our own country that decide whether you live or die. That's got nothing to do with migrants. That has got everything to do with poor administration and corruption. So what is key here then, Mark, to resolving this particular uh, issue? Because obviously, one, um, experts have been saying, well, if this is your feeling and this is how you, you think uh, migrants are affecting the health system, come up with the numbers, do the study, do the research, come up with empirical evidence and put it on the table. Don't, don't just thumb suck it. Is that the only way? And are we even going to be able to, to measure the impact? No. Well, the first thing is it would be very useful to come up with the numbers because planning for a health system always depends upon data and depends upon information. So, so numbers would be useful, not just in relation to migrants, but in relation to, to usage and outcomes in the health system. But on the specific issue of migration, Tabo, I would say two, two other things would make a big difference. One is as I said earlier, to have a negotiation on this 
within the Southern African development community, either at level of, of ministers of health or at level of heads of government, because migration is with us for the rest of our lives. Climate change is driving migration. Conflict is driving migration. We should have a plan for, for, for how the health systems manage that. But the second uh, factor would be a change in foreign policy, where our government no longer props up corrupt regimes in other southern African countries who are destroying the economies and the infrastructure of those countries and causing people to have to flee those countries in very large numbers. And two countries are a perfect case in point. Eswatini, where we are still mollycoddling the, 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 the king uh, of, of Eswatini, despite the fact that you know, 100 protesters were shot dead uh, in June 2021, just for demonstrating for, for democracy. And of course, uh, Zimbabwe, where we continue to support President Ngagwa uh, and we probably will support him when he tries to rig the next general election in 2023. So we are the, we are the makers of, we're the authors of our own unhappiness when it comes to this issue. Mark Haywood, appreciate your time. Thanks so much uh, for coming on. That's uh, Mark Haywood there, uh, helping us in that conversation.